Good morning, welcome back to Karen's Corners. I hope you enjoyed the last one. This is the second part of her installment, so I hope you enjoyed the books I've chosen. Today, the first book is Be Quiet by Ryan T. Higgins. It's one of my favorites. Finally, I get my very own book to start in. This is going to be great. I'm going to make it a wordless book. Oh, they are so very artistic. This book will have no words at all, starting now. Be quiet. Hi, Rupert. What are you? Shh. Be quiet. This book does not have words. Wow, we a wordless book. Can I help? Oops. I'm talking. Eep. I'm talking about talking. Stop. The book already started. You're messing it up. Please let me stay in the book. I promise to be quiet. I'll be extra wordless. Please. I said be quiet. This book is wordless. Hey guys, what's with all the shouting? Hi Thistle, we're making a wordless book, but I've promised to be quiet so I can't tell you about it. A wordless book? I love those. They're very artistic. Can I be in it? Yes, but we won't tell Rupert since we're not supposed to be talking. I told you to be quiet. You're putting too many words in the book. Yay, this book is going to be so fun. Quiet, you. This book will be more than fun. It'll be visually stimulating. What does visually stimulating mean? It means we're going to poke our readers in the eyeballs with pictures. Oh, that's not what it means. It means we need to have strong illustrations. Like this, Arr. Look, we're helping. No, you're not. Be quiet. This book is wordless. Rupert is right, Nibs. What this book needs is some strong but silent types. Hmm, strong but silent. Well, what about him? He's strong, he's silent. Every book needs a bear in it. I don't know. He looks grumpy. What about something cuter? What about a kitten? Aw, oh, kittens are super cute and friendly. Oh, look at his cute little nose and whiskers. And it's beautiful big eyes and shining teeth. Nibs, I think it's getting a little too friendly. Quick, think of something vegetarian. A cucumber? We'll just draw a smile on it and add some googly eyes. And there, a vegetarian. Nibs, what exactly do you think a vegetarian is? Stop filling my brilliant piece of wordless literature with nonsense and stop talking. You're not taking this seriously. Is this more serious? What are you supposed to be, a president? No, I'm Vincent Van Moose. I don't think anyone will get that. Can you try something a little similar? Simpler? We're simple. We're potatoes. Stop talking and changing the pictures around. I don't even like potatoes. Well, everybody, I'm going to stop now. And if you want to know the rest of the story, please come and sign up this book at the St. Mary's Public Library. But I do have another book for you. And it's the opposite. It's called This and That. And it's by Mem Fox and Judy Horacek. I'll tell you a story of this, and I'll tell you a story of that. I'll tell you a story of cavernous caves and a chimp with a magic hat. And then, I'll tell you a story of this, and I'll tell you a story of that. I'll tell you a story of two little boys who race down the road with a cat. And then, I'll tell you a story of this. And I'll tell you a story of that. I'll tell you a story of a crazy giraffe who tried to sit on a mat. And then, I'll tell you a story of this. And I'll tell you a story of that. I'll tell you a story of kings and queens who love to have a chat. And then 
I'll tell you a story of this, and I'll tell you a story of that. I'll tell you a story of two speckled hands who were terribly, terribly fat. But now it's bedtime, so now you'll have to come in and see what happens after the word so. I hope you enjoyed that book. Now I'm going to do one of my favorites. It's an older book. The other two I showed you today are new books. And it's called Memoirs of a Goldfish. Day one, I swam around my bowl. Day two, I swam around my bowl twice. Day three, I swam around my bowl and I thought about taking a nap. But fish don't sleep, so I swam around my bowl. Day four, I got some company today. I don't like the looks of him one bit. He doesn't say anything. He just bubbles. Day five, Mr. Bubbles still hasn't said a word. He just looks at me and I say, said hello today, and he said, oh, oh, oh. he's creepy. Day six, today my bowl looks like a garden. There are a bunch of plants in here now. I guess I'll have to water them. Great. Day seven, Mr. Bubbles and I now have company. He's a snail. He says his name is Mervyn and he likes to eat the slime off the inside of the bowl. He's disgusting. Day eight, things are getting very crowded. While watering the plants, I met a crab named Fred. I offered him my fin and he nearly cut it off. Even Mr. Bubbles is afraid of him. Fred says, I just stand my side of the bowl. Look, I said, the whole bowl is my side of the bowl. He snapped his claw and Mervyn fainted. I've got to get out of here. Day nine. That does it. My bowl now contains a sunken pirate ship, two guppies named Rhonda and Clark, and an angelfish named Cha-Cha who says she's from Hollywood. I can't turn around without bumming into something. At least Mervyn is happy. There's more gunk on the side of the bowl every day. Well, everybody, I'm going to leave you at that fun part. So I do hope you'll come into the library and sign out. Memoirs of a Goldfish. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.